Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lorenzo's Lessons of Space. In this series I will try to explain briefly some interesting concepts about space travel, uh, current developments and other fun stuff. Uh, to, do, to illustrate these points I will be using my very favorite game, Kerbal Space Program. It's a sandboxy game, it's a little bit like Minecraft. You can make your own spaceships, design them from bits and pieces and send them off into the heavens. The fun bit of this game is that the game's solar system closely resembles our own. The, the planet, the home planet Kerbin, uh, looks like our Earth. It's about one-tenth the size, although it mysteriously has uh, the same amount of gravity and an atmosphere that's comparable in height, so it's not quite a physically real planet, but it makes for an interesting game experience. Uh, you can see me now building a little rocket. The question we'll be answering today, or the question we'll be exploring today, more accurately, it will be how do you get to space? Uh, we all, we've all known uh, the movies, the news, people talking of just get into orbit. And what exactly is an orbit? We will see, can you just fly up, get to space, and will you automatically be in orbit? Orbit then being that state of circling around the planet, never falling down again. As you can see here, I'm building a, a fairly simple rocket. It's got two fuel tanks, an engine, a rocket engine. And just now I'm attaching some solid rocket boosters to the sides. Um, for now, don't really worry about how to design a rocket. I will do this for you. You just sit back and enjoy the ride. And here we are on the launch pad. We can see our brave astronaut Jebediah, Jebediah Kerman in the bottom right corner. He's looking happy at the moment. And we can see our tiny little rocket standing by for liftoff. Throttling up right now, and there we go. For this rocket mission I will just be flying straight up. There's no maneuvers, there's just going up and up and up. And uh, in the game the, uh, the atmosphere of the planet Kerbin reaches up to about 70 kilometers above that and we're in space. So as you can see on the lower left corner the two boosters are now running out of fuel and they will soon be jettisoned and then the rocket will keep going up and up and up. In fact the first uh, manned spaces in the actual world, uh, the ones the Russians and the Americans did, they were very much like this. They did not uh, immediately go to the moon, they did not immediately launch space stations. The first missions were just let's see what's up there, launch a rocket, see what happens. And that's exactly what we're doing now. As you can see, as the rocket gains speed, it's about 350 meters per second now at 20, 12 kilometers and going strong. It's about halfway through its fuel. You can see the sky turning to black. There's a moon in the distance. And soon the, the stars will come out and you can see that uh, we're truly gaining some altitude. As you can see, the simple rocket is well capable of gaining a lot of altitude on its own. And we will see just exactly how high it will be and if it will ever fall down again. If we look in the lower right corner, our brave man Jebediah is still smiling and bobbing around. He must really like this, this rocket. And look there, there's the stars. And our rocket is still burning strong. It's now up to about 1400 meters per second, which is one and a half kilometers every second. It's a tad bit how faster you can go on the highway. And we're about to run out of fuel now. We're at 60 kilometers, climbing rapidly, and we are in space now. So this rocket is now in space. There's no atmosphere around it. There's still gravity acting on it. And we will see what happens if Jebediah bravely steps out of the capsule in just a bit. We'll wait for the fuel to burn out first. Can't have him plummeting into a burning rocket, that's not very kind. So here's our rocket, completely out of fuel. And it's now drifting and Jebediah, our brave astronaut, is now experiencing zero gravity or weightlessness or microgravity as it's often called. And as I click the EVA, sending for extravehicular activity button, he leaves the capsule. And there he is, in his little little suit with the jetpacks, and everything looks decidedly spacey. We're definitely in space, there's no air, there's no... You can just float there next to a ship. Everything seems nice and peaceful. So we can answer part one of our question, we're definitely in space. 
And now to answer the question, are we also in orbit? Will we, will we fall down again? Will we just remain here magically? Uh, I think most of you will know the answer already. I want you to imagine a tennis ball. You can throw the tennis ball up straight up into the air as high as you can throw it. It'll be a couple of meters. And that tennis ball will come falling down. And that has nothing to do with uh, with the atmosphere it's going through. That has everything to do with the gravity field that's being thrown up in the, the planets. You can throw it as hard as you go and it will have a sizable speed going up. But it will fall down again. And this game, it has a map view. This is it. And it will draw your trajectory for you. So as you can see, this trajectory very much resembles a tennis ball being thrown up. It's being thrown up quite high, about 3000 kilometers. We did throw it up with rocket motors after all, but it will decidedly fall down again. And we can see this. It will reach its highest point in about an hour. Fortunately, we can accelerate time a little bit. Here goes. And we can see it's just going up and up and up. It's at about one and a half thousand kilometers now. And it's slowing down. It's at about a kilometer a second now. It's about 800 meters a second, and in just a bit it will reach its apoapsis, as it's called, the highest point, and start to fall back down again, just like a tennis ball would if you throw it up. So while Jebediah is decidedly in space, he's not actually in orbit. An orbit is uh, a special kind of trajectory that does not go back to the planet on its own. You can see accelerating time back. This one is definitely falling back just like the tennis ball was just like the early space missions space missions were and here the capsule will so soon be separated and it will take Jebediah back to the planet Kerbin back to home and because it's falling straight down into the atmosphere the g-loads if you look at the bottom of the screen are off the scale they're completely in the red were this real life he would be dead fortunately this is just a game so we have seen now that just by shooting up very high, very fast, you will get to space, but you will not get to orbit. For that you have to do something else. And I'll tell you what it is. You just have to go really quickly sideways. So that you keep falling, but keep missing the planet, and that con can continue forever. I will not show this in this video, but it will be up in the next one, along with some theory, no maths, I promise, no maths. And I can show you, I will show you how to maneuver in orbit, how to modify your orbit, get into an orbit in the first place, and how to change the different points of it. And here we can see this mission took just over two hours, fortunately not in real time, reached just under 3000 kilometers and the g-forces upon re-entry were 36. And he's still smiling. So if you like this video be sure to click on like or subscribe or what have you. Uh, I'll be busy make I'll be busy making the next one about orbits and how to get into them, how to modify them, how to get comfortable with them. Until that, this was Lorenzo in Lorenzo Space Lessons, and I'll see you guys next time.